Hello and welcome to The Money Compass. In each episode, we will be preparing you for your journey through the world of finance and helping you tick off the destinations on your financial itinerary. Pack your bags and prepare for takeoff as you navigate your way to financial success. Are we all ready for Christmas then, Becky? I'm getting there slowly but surely. The uh, house is like Santa's grotto. I've got my tree up and all the lights up and all the... I need to trimmings, but I'm not sure that that's the right word to Turkey use. Turkey with all the trimmings, maybe. Yeah, but... yeah, I was just thinking about food, as always. Nothing ever changes there, let's no. face it. No, what about you? <laughs> all the decorations are up, the reindeer are in the garden. Oh, very nice. Indeed. So, this week we're back to children's savings and investments. Now, I know previously we've done quite a lot on um, children's savings, haven't we? We have indeed. So, previously we've talked about... Ways to encourage your children to save, so and the types of bank accounts and savings accounts and premium bonds and all the different things you can do. And I do remember uh, about getting very excited about the the pocket money app, the Go Henry pocket money app, and Pigby goes to the fair. I think is uh, the app that I have on my phone. I'm not going to lie. You still have it. Well, you have to play occasionally for my nephew, <laughs> your of course. Market research, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so we've talked about lots of different ways of encouraging your children to save but today we're thinking about what us as parents grandparents can I made myself sound like a grandparent then I'm not that old honest (laughs) but what we can do for children to give them a start basically in the future excellent so just something that's popped into my head that I'll tell you about that has become more prevalent recently I think is um Ralph obviously I go out with Ralph a lot to see clients And he used to get very irate with uh, parents and grandparents that wanted to give money to children or grandchildren to help them buy a house. Right. Because he said, why do you want to just give them money? Like, make them save up for it. When I was a child, I had to save up. And I think this just proves that we now need to help our children and grandchildren more. So investing for them when they're young is a good point. Um, But... Ralph always says, don't, don't give them money. Don't, don't do that. It's a silly thing to do. And it was only when I went to uh, look at buying a house and taking out a mortgage that Ralph realised just how much of a deposit you need and how it's not like the olden days when the, you used to be able to go in and say, oh yeah, I earn £100,000 a year when actually you might have only earned £20,000, but they never needed proof of anything. Yeah. And how they now need proof of everything. I think you suddenly twigged that actually... Our children do need a lot more help. So it's really, really good today that we're talking about what we can do to be able to help them in future. Yes, indeed. So do you want to kick us off, Becky? Tell us about one of the one of the things that we can do for our, our children. OK, well, we'll start with the junior ISA, or you may have heard it referred to as a JISA. Mm-hmm. And this is essentially an ISA, which you can pay into for your children. So only the parent of the child can set the junior ISA account up um, and you can have a cash JISA or you can have a stocks and shares uh, JISA, sorry, or you can have a combination of the two, much like you can with a grown up adult normal ISA. (laughs) The ISA or JISA, sorry, limit for this tax year is £9,000. So that would be a good, a good chunk even if it's only one tax year nine thousand pounds a good chunk towards your deposit or whatever it may be that that your child might need it for so i know we've talked about it before becky but remind us what's good about an isa or a junior isa well the main benefit is that it is tax free so any interest that is earned on the on if it's a cash isa or jisa you're gonna shoot me by the end of this (laughs) i can see you shooting daggers at me over the room (laughs) On the cash, JISA is completely tax-free. Any dividends, if you're investing in a stocks and shares, JISA will also be free of tax. So it's a good way to accumulate or help to accumulate your savings. Indeed. And as we're planning on this growing as well over a a nice long period of time for your children to have this money, even better, there's no capital gains tax either, so you're not going to pay any tax on the growth. So it's everything win-win about it. Win-win situation, isn't it? It is indeed. So, as you've said, the, um, it's the parents that can open up these ISAs on behalf of the children, but anybody else can pay into them. But what happens, these ISAs, once the child gets to 18, 
it's then legally theirs. So it then gets moved into a normal adult ISA and they can do what they like with it. So if you want to have complete control over it and not let them have it, maybe it's not the right right kind of investment for you, but it is a good way to save save up some money tax free. But there is a, a nice little niche here, isn't there, Becky, for when your children are 16 or 17. Tell us the little bonus that we can have here. So if your child is 16 or 17, they there is a little a little loophole, shall we say, where they have their £9,000 junior ISA allowance, which they can, they can pay into or you can pay into on their behalf. And they also have their £20,000 adult ISA allowance, which they could use to pay £20,000 into a cash ISA. And I have specified that it is a cash ISA because you can't open a stocks and shares ISA until you're 18. So you could end up contributing up to £29,000 in an ISA wrapper for for your child. So that that sounds pretty good to me. (laughs) It does indeed. And I did have a little bit of a sneaky look earlier just to see what um, return cash ISAs have got at the moment. I think the highest rate I could find at the moment is about 2.5%. So it's not awful. But it's not great. Could be better, could be worse, I would say. Exactly. So that's why you may, may choose to look at stock, stocks and shares um, GISAs as well. But we're, I'm not going to go into any more detail about how they work or what they do, because I'm sure we've covered that enough times that people can go back and look at a previous episode and, and listen about all those again. They can indeed. So there's another thing that I like the idea of for using for children, because they can't get it for a very, very long time. <laughs> Not that I'm a mean person or anything. No, no. So not for their house deposit then? No. (laughs) So this is going to be for later in life when they come to retiring. Ah. So you'll probably be long gone by the time your own children retire. Or if you're very lucky, you might still be around. Not many people tend to see their own children retire. I wouldn't say necessarily. I wouldn't say that it's definitely not a given that you would do anyway. No. So uh, we're talking about pensions now. Pensions for children. Oh, yes. Never. (laughs) Indeed. So at the moment, you can pay into a pension a maximum of £2,880 for your child, and you'll then get tax relief. So if you paid in the full £2,880, 20% tax relief, you would end up with £3,600 in a pension for your child. There's a good reason to pay into a pension from the off, isn't there? (laughs) Indeed it is. So at the moment, you would be able to access that pension at 55, but there is chatter that that pension age is going to increase. So just bear in mind that this this could change, that the benchmark and the, the end goal could change slightly of when this money could get out. But if you're intending it for the long term, it's still a good way to go. At the age of 18, again, this pension would then become the child's. So it's in their name and they take control of it rather than the parent's. But anybody can pay into this again. So you could have your parents paying, grandparents, anybody that wants to put some money in, they can, as long as they don't exceed that allowance. But do you want to know something good about this, Becky? Go on, hit me with it. How little you can put in to end up with quite a lot? I'm guessing it is a long time for that money to sit there and grow. So I'm guessing even if it was like £15,000, let's say, that would end up being a substantial amount of money over let's say the course of 50 years yes definitely so here's the maths okay (laughs) if you were able to pay in the full amount for 10 years so that's 2880 pounds for 10 years nice simple maths you'd have paid in 28880 pounds but obviously 3600 pounds is going in each year for you with your tax relief so if that grew at a rate of six percent from for those 10 years and up until your child 55 your child would have from that 28,800 that you've paid in 700,000 pounds wow that would pretty much set them up wouldn't it it definitely would now if it grew at seven percent it would be a million pounds (sighs) so for less than 30,000 pounds of money from your pocket you could make your child a millionaire by basically saving for them for 10 years. Wow, that is impressive, isn't it? It's incredible. And it just goes to show the power of compounding and how that money basically snowballs and grows over a period of time. 
yeah i know we have said it in a earlier episode but is the money that you pay in now when you're talking about your retirement plans that ends up making the most money for you in in the years to come because of that compound Growth. Definitely. And I, I'm sure we've said this before. There's three things that make money. <laughs> there is. Time, risk, risk and money. So if you don't want to take too much risk necessarily and you haven't got a huge amount of money, as long as you've got plenty of time for that money to be invested, you're still going to be able to achieve the things you want to achieve. So Definitely. obviously, just remember, if you are doing something like this and you're putting it in for that longer period of time, you do need to review it. You do need to do something with it. You can't just put it in there and expect that it's going to set the world on fire if you never look at it again. So you're, you're doing this for their future and you need to nurture it and look after it and do the best you can for it along the way. Oh, that was very philosophical there, Emma. <laughs> Felt very heartwarming. <laughs> yeah, it did. Nice for the festive time of year. <laughs> Definitely. So they're the two main things that we, we've got for basically parents or grandparents to be able to do for their grandchildren to be able to set them up in future. We have indeed. Only thing that I would just add is both of these um, types of products, so the junior ISA and the pension, once the child gets to 18, they do then take control of that money. It is then theirs to do whatever they want. So if you as the parent or grandparent want to keep control of that money, so you might not want to give it, to them at 18 you might want them to have it at a later date or whatever the reason may be there are alternative investments that you could use often it uses things such as a trust to be able to protect that money from from that child until a different time um, but it's a, a bit beyond the scope of today it's a bit more complex and there's lots of different types of trusts there's lots of ifs and ifs buts, buts and maybes and, yeah. <laughs> and i don't want to blow everyone's mind just before christmas so no. uh, I think we'll save that one for another day. I think we should. Now, I think it might be time for a mince pie. Oh, <laughs> got me hungry already. Yes, indeed. I'm there. <laughs> Thanks, Becky. Happy Christmas. And with that, we've completed today's episode. We hope you have enjoyed following along with us today and taking another step closer to a financially secure future. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, you can head over to themoneycompass.co.uk where you can find out more information, hints and tips from today's episode. If you'd like to get more involved, share your own experiences and learn from a friendly community on a similar journey to you, why not join us in our Facebook group, The Money Compass, where we will support you in navigating your way to financial success. Thank you for listening and see you next time.